Hi, I'm NJEA President Wendell Steinhauer. The New Jersey Education Association is committed to great public schools for every child. So we're proud to support Teacher Appreciation Week, a special series produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating New Jersey's talented and dedicated teachers. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, working for great public schools for every child, activists in cooperation with the American Medicine Chest Challenge. Choose New Jersey. Our mission is attracting companies to the Garden State. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology, Health Republic Insurance of New Jersey, Berkeley College, and by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, founded by the Jewish community. Promotional support provided by the Star Ledger, powering NJ.com, and by Commerce Magazine. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. You see, Italian you go right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. Man, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. Welcome to One on One. I'd like to introduce you to one of the great teachers we have on this series as part of our partnership with the NJEA. It's the Classroom Close-Up Series where you feature great teachers. Jack Friedman, AP physics teacher, down in Voorhees at Eastern Regional High School. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me here. We're about to see a video as part okay. of the uh, Classroom Close-Up Series that uh, runs on our, our sister station, our partners at NJTV. Um, this is part of a, a story that, that basically emanates. You guys got a grant from MIT, right? the great MIT. There's a problem with clean water in Africa. Right that you and your students uh, were trying to deal with. You got this grant to go pursue this story, and you created this invention called the? Mahi Drum. Mahi Drum. That's what we're going to see. That's we're right. going to come back and talk about it, the experience that you had and the students of, students, excuse, excuse me, the experience of your students as well, creating the Mahi Drum. Great story from Classroom Close-Up. Let's take a look. Eastern Regional High School is home to InventTeam, students who won a grant last year from the Lemelson Foundation at MIT. The grant funded the students' invention of a water filtration system for third world countries. Our invention is called the Mahi Drum, which is actually derived from the Swahili word for water. And it's a contained water purification system that can be implemented in third world countries where uh, finances would be a major issue. Even in poor African villages, some people have bicycles, so the Mahi Drum is powered by pedaling a bike in a stand. The Eastern Invent Team has a sister school in Gulu, Uganda, where, as in other African countries, women and children walk many miles a day just to get clean water. We started with a simple design right here. The team spent months working on the Mahi Drum. There was a lot of trial and error and learning. We couldn't use this glue. See how it has that yellow residue there? That dissolves in water and makes it toxic. We decided to kind of move forward and look at different uh, ways to run the water past the bulb. We moved through several different uh, prototypes. What we ended up finding is that the most efficient thing was Teflon tubing. The first thing we did was we tested E. coli bacteria with the bulbs that we had to make sure that we were getting a good kill rate. And what we did is we did three different dilutions, three different, like, the clearness of the water was different, and we made sure to plate each thing twice. And as you can see through here, there is a difference in the growth of bacteria and fungus after you run it through the system. As Kenny pedals, his power comes in from here, right through this cable. Ultimately, the inventors perfected the 55-gallon purification drum. UV lights are powered by the pedaling bike, and the drum can hold enough water for an entire village. Eureka Fest is an annual event sponsored by MIT. The Lemelson Foundation at MIT gives grants to high school and college students and cash awards to established adult inventors. My husband Jerry believed that the path to our country's dynamic and prosperous path was due to inventive minds. Mm, powerful stuff. What's your reaction when you see that? 
I'm really proud of that. These, these were fantastic kids, and, they, and I, I, I almost forget how much work they put into it, how many just hours they did. I mean, you know, these kids had full lives. They had sports. They had girlfriends. They had just all kinds of How'd interests. How did you pick them? I didn't pick them. See, this was started maybe about three years ago with the Gift and Talent program at our school. We have his teacher, Donna Donato, and what she did was she recognized these kids as freshmen, as unique. We have lots of really brilliant, talented kids in our school, but this, she saw that there was a large cluster of them in this mm. particular grade and how well they worked together. They were such good friends, and they had so many different unique talents, some like biology, some like engineering, some were in electronics, and some were into writing, and they were grant writers, and they were just an unusual, eclectic group of kids. And, um, she kind of tracked them for a few years, and then she saw this program about um, developing something that you could maybe, I don't know, something that would help a third world country. Make a difference. Make a difference. And this Mahi drum, is it, where is it right now, what stage is it, in, is it in, and what impact is it having? Well, that one that you saw right there was just a prototype. In fact, right. the final version that you saw on stage in MIT was really a, an exceptional piece of equipment. It's really, it works. You know, it works, it's efficient. Uh, you know, and we also based it on the fact that in Africa, a lot of the older women, they're the ones who are getting the water, they're the ones who are collecting the water. So this thing is made for anybody. If you can stand and get on that bike, you can effortlessly... You don't have to be a great athlete. To not do at this. all. That was the point. Uh, you had to make it so somebody who's going to use it can use it. And these people can now... You can, anybody, any bicycle, you can get... That's all custom made, by the way. That, 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 right. that mount, the motor, the, the, the electronics are custom. I had a kid who, through YouTube, would go on at night look stuff up, go on the internet, mm -hmm. and he ended up designing this beautiful integrated circuit which controls the whole system. So it's fully automated. What has it done for you, this experience? I'll tell you what, it's, it's really reminded me how much you can do, how much you can learn. It's caused me to go back to school. I've what been taking mean? more online classes because you know, I, I see that these kids learn on their own. You know, these, some of these kids, they disappear for the weekend, they come back with all this amazing stuff they learned and did. And I, and I would be like, you know, I, I gotta keep up with these guys. So I've been taking online classes in physics and, and electronics and it's really inspired me to keep working and keep becoming more educated and, just, and just, just expanding myself. I've asked every teacher who's come in here, every educator, how much you love what you do. You know, it depends on what day of the week. You know, is it Monday morning? <laughs> is it Friday afternoon? So, it, look, there's certain parts of my job I really love. When you love it, why do you love it so much? I love it because of things like this. You, have, you get to work with people who are so talented and so dedicated. And, you know, they're, they're young, so they have great ideas. They're not so contained with old ideas. You know, sometimes I would think things would need to be done a certain way, and these kids would show me a different way to do things. So they inspired me, and when I see the kids succeed, and I feel like I had something to do with it, it's, it's a great honor, and that's what I love about great it. Great teachers never stop learning. And that's true. You have to really keep learning. And the reason why also is because you have to look at the perspective of the learner. You know, people assume, well, students should be able to do this. They should be able to do this. And then when I take a class online, like, I don't like the way the professor did that. I don't like that assignment. I'm not going to do that in my class. Well, I'll so, tell you so what, reflect. Uh, you're a role model for, for all educators out there, and that's why we love doing Thanks, I appreciate this it. series in cooperation with our partners at the NJA. Jack Friedman, AP, right. physics teacher, Eastern Regional High School in Voorhees, New Jersey. Thank you for uh, honoring us and uh, being a part of a great profession. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you, Steve. Stay with us one-on-one. -on -one. We'll be right back right after this. If you would like more information on this program or if you'd like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Visit us online at oneonone.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD, And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. John Russell is a social studies teacher at Burlington City High School, part of our Classroom Close-Up series in cooperation with the NJA. Good to see you. Thanks. Nice to see you. Uh, we're about to see a piece of video, again, part of our partnership with the New Jersey Teachers Educational Association, um, classroom close-up seen every week on uh, NJ TV, a terrific series. Set up the series we're about to see, teaching about Holocaust history with Legos. That's right. So uh, I was teaching a course called Humanities, and uh, I took it over mid-year and was looking for some interesting ways to engage students, and I came across this uh, Polish artist who designed a Lego concentration camp series for an art contest. and. Uh, kind of used it as a warm-up one day, and it just exploded. And I said, I've got to make this a full lesson, yeah. Yeah, well, the video speaks for itself. And by the way, if you want to get more information on where you can check out Classroom Close-Up every week on public television, go on the NJEA website. Um, well, check that out right there. And also the njtvonline.org website as well. 
our partners at Public Television. Classroom close-up, John Russell, very innovative stuff. Let's go to the clip. reactions to what you see. We're looking at the limits of artistic freedom and expression, and we're looking at it through the medium of the Holocaust. When they walk into the room, I start off with like this gallery walk where I just have the images up. I don't say anything about them. And they just go around the room and kind of write down their initial reactions. And they're usually all very negative or very shocked or they think they're real. How many people have played with Legos in here? It was an artist representation of the Holocaust through Legos. And we kind of discussed about how is it moral for this guy to do this with Legos. So basically in the mid 90s, Lego was running this like international contest uh, to use Legos to build some kind of work of art. And this artist, Zbigniew Libera, he basically told Lego he was going to build a hospital. They provided the bricks to him and then he built this concentration camp series. It kind of like struck home for me because, you know, you're not used to seeing something like evil represented with something that you've always found was good and like wholesome. When you get Legos, you're just like trying to have some fun, not think back on a terrible event that happened. When you paint a picture, you're telling a story. This is just another way of telling the story. Okay, good point. So art is definitely part of it, telling the story and what the artist is trying to say. It's like the opposite of what Legos are supposed to be. I thought it was real. I thought that these came out on the shelves and kids really played with these, so it kind of shocked me a little bit. That's kind of the point of this, you know, is to shock them into really thinking about the core values and the core history here. It's really a way to encourage young people to think about real-world topics, to engage students, to strengthen their critical thinking skills, and to bring history to life. For creating lessons like this one, John Russell was recognized as New Jersey's 2012 Humanities Teacher of the Year. What we are looking for is to see a teacher who is in the humanities, um, so you know, a social studies or a history teacher or an um, English literature teacher, who's really thinking about how to connect their students to the material in a way that gets them thinking deeply about why is it important to study the past. So it was a nice way of kind of threading through methods of kind of humanistic inquiry, you know, how do you ask questions about the past, but then also connecting it to the present um, through this just really creative way. So we were very impressed by that. I think he was named Humanity Teacher of the Year because not only does he have a really good knowledge on the subject, but he also teaches it in a new way. It's not all classic book work. It's really interesting. And he creates these awesome lessons and stuff that you don't really see in a normal teacher. Chose this. By the way, we should make it clear that you were the Humanities Teacher of the Year bestowed by the New Jersey Council on the Humanities. I'm going to ask you something. What were you trying to accomplish when you shocked these kids through this exercise? And you did. I wanted to show kids <clears throat> and have them think about the fact that everything isn't black and white in life. And, you know, we're looking at the Holocaust and there's lots of different, different interpretations. Most people think the Holocaust negative, of course, obviously. Um, but then this artist did something to shock people and rethink what the Holocaust was all about. He was Polish. Poland was, you know, hit so hard by the Holocaust. And he did this to shock and to get people to think, what does the Holocaust mean today? Why do we still study it? Why does it matter so much? And, you know, for my kids who are 17 years old, you know, maybe they don't see the relevance still in something like that. And I think they do when they see it through. Where does the discussion go after that? Well, it's basically about artistic <clears throat> license and freedom. What's appropriate, what's not? Are there barriers set up? You know, and how far can we can we, you know, get close to those barriers, and when do we cross a line? Did this artist cross a line? Did he not? At the beginning of the lesson, they usually are outraged that Lego is being used to portray the Holocaust. By the end of it, they're starting to think of things like, hey, Lego produced a Cowboys and Indians series. Well, that's a genocide as well. So, you know, is Lego involved in this? I mean, how, how much is Lego, you know, taking things too far? How much are people taking things too far? There's so much going on with it. So, so humanities, people often see the humanities as somewhat abstract. You do not, do you? I don't, no. I see it as very um, 
concrete and ties into so many subject areas. And that's what I like about a class like this, is we can look at literature, we can look at art, you know, we can look at history. You look at current so events? Much. Oh, absolutely. Let me ask you, you have a game plan. Mm -hmm. You're working your lesson plan. Correct. An event happens in the news that clearly captures the interest of young people. We're doing this program in the summer of 2013. Mm -hmm. When um, an event, Trayvon Martin case, plays itself out, do you bring it into the classroom? Immediately. Immediately. Have to tie it into the classroom. It's current, it's relevant, it's hot. You have to? I have to do that. I have to get my kids excited and interested about learning, and these are things they're learning about every day, and I can tie it right in. That's humanities? It is. Where, again, I'll ask, where is it that you would like that discussion to go, or is that not part of your thinking, where it goes? Well. I'd like it to go, you know, obviously with civil rights, civil liberties, things like that, even tying it back to different, um, you know, topics in American history. But where it goes, the students will, will drive. Um, that's what makes it interesting and engaging for them. When did you know? I've asked every teacher who's ever come in here, sat in that seat, when did you know that you wanted, maybe even needed to teach? Um, Probably in fifth grade, I knew I wanted to teach. <laughs> I had a, a dynamic social studies teacher. His name was Bert Stronsdorf, uh, retired. I'm a product of New Jersey's public education system. I'm proud of that. And you know, he really made me interested in history and made it fun, exciting. And I knew I wanted to be a teacher like that. So fifth grade, I wanted to teach history. What do you see in these kids? In Burlington City? What do you see in these kids in your classroom? I see so much potential. I see kids that have worked hard and have really um, you know, done a great job. And I see kids who are our future. And nothing excites me more than when some of these kids go on to be teachers, especially history teachers, and I had an impact on that. John Russell, you're the reason why we do this uh, series, Classroom Close-Up in cooperation with our partners at the NJEA. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Um, you're in a wonderful profession. And uh, we're proud that people like you decide to do it. Well, keep mentoring you. others. Thank you. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back right after this. If you would like more information on this program or if you'd like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Visit us online at oneonone.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD, and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Deanna Nicosa Jones, fifth grade teacher, middle school assistant director, Woodruff Middle School, Upper Deerfield Township. How are you doing? We're doing well. Now, doing you are really part well. of the uh, classroom close up series we're doing with yes. the NJA? Yes, I was. You admit that? Yes, I do, absolutely. Wholeheartedly. It's, I know there's a misprint here. It says you've been teaching for 21 years. I have. Get I have been teaching here. in New Jersey schools for 21 years. I'm very proud of it. Got into teaching, why? Um, well, why not? You know, it was one of those things that I don't think it, you pick it, it picks you. And from a very young age, I think that I knew that that's what I wanted to do, where I needed to be. I was a theater major okay. in, in college, and um, I get to perform every day in my classroom. So, you know, can't get it better than that. We'll do this. Set up that. the clip we're about to see from Classroom Close Up, which can be seen every week on uh, the terrific NJTV. Go on NJTV online, right, dot org. And check out NJ, uh, NJ uh, uh, the Classroom Close-Up series produced by NJ, um, um, NJEA, but also NJEA website as well. Set up this clip we're about to see. You know the clip that shows all the great stuff that you guys are doing? Absolutely. We had an opportunity to take our middle school students yep. to um, the Junior Theater Festival in Atlanta, Georgia, yep. this past winter. And for us, it was a really big deal because we're from a very small rural school in South Jersey. We have an excellent theater program, and our kids had a wonderful time, and we got to do a lot of exciting things. Then we'll talk about it after. Clip from Classroom Close-Up. Let's take a look. Five, four, set. Three, two, one, go. Ariel, down here is your home. The human world is a mess. These students are performing a scene from The Little Mermaid Junior, a special Disney production designed for high school and middle school musical theater programs. The fish on the land ain't happy. They sad cause they in the hole. In fact, 
This group from Woodruff Middle School was one of the few middle schools invited to perform at the 2013 Junior Theater Festival in Atlanta. It was just a phenomenal couple of days. It was life-changing. And I can even say life-changing for me, not just the kids. In conjunction with Disney, iTheatrics, a New York-based theater company, has produced the Junior Theater Festival since 2003. When we got there, we got to rehearse in, in a big ballroom, which was a little daunting for the kids. It was hour after hour of um, meeting famous people, um, being in workshops with people who did choreography for Glee, singing Broadway tunes with the men and women who wrote them. This year, special guest Alan Menken, the Academy Award-winning Disney composer, performed for the students. And to see Alan Menken, who is a living legend, um, get so choked up and so moved by being in this room with all of these wonderful children and them all knowing every word to his songs and singing along with him. It made a theater kid overwhelmed and so proud and it was just a wonderful experience. Look at this stuff, isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? The role I'm playing is Ariel and the Little Mermaid. She falls in love with a prince and she has to take some desperate measures to get legs. What would I give to live where you are? What would I pay to stay here beside you? What Atlanta was a amazing experience. It was so much fun meeting new people and going to the workshops and learning new things about acting and singing and dancing. But you'll find in our days, I mended all my ways, repented, seen the light and made a switch. True? Yeah. It's a lot of energy on the stage and I like it. There are always people that you can always turn to because we are like a really, really big family and we do love each other and we watch out for each other. So that's probably what I will take from this experience. I'm hoping that they'll take away from this. I did this once, I can do it. And when someone says, yeah, that's too tough for you or that's not really your thing, they can step up and do it. Wow, life-changing. Absolutely, absolutely. So? Well, I think that we so put on children the need to belong to something, and sometimes it's sports, and sometimes academic groups, and there's this group of kids that sometimes gets pushed to the side or gets forgotten about. And this gave them an opportunity to go to the big game, to be in the big academic um, you know, championship, except it was about what they love and what they're good at. And it, it helped them to see that there are lots of other kids like me. And sometimes theater kids get some, you know, a reputation for being weird or Let's out there. Okay. They call themselves theater kids. Absolutely. It's like sports kids. <clears throat> Is there something about theater kids? Yes, definitely. What is, what is it? It's, it's a need. Well, lots of times they're the class clown. Lots of times they're the kid who isn't paying attention because they're somewhere else in their mind. They're dancing, singing, and dancing you know, under their desk <laughs> and not doing the academics the way we think, or they're not that great at recess. You know, Kickball for theater kids isn't always fun, fun, fun. PE isn't usually the most happy hour of their lives. So this gives them a place to be them. And, and being a theater kid is an amazing, amazing thing. What do you feel toward them? Well, Ariel in that video is my daughter. So Ariel, are you kidding? Yes, she is my daughter. So that you know that group oh, is very oh. special to me because I have been with them, watching them grow up um, for all these years. But I feel um, a a parent parental relationship with them. I feel that it's my duty to show them how special they are when maybe other people don't see it because they don't understand it. They don't see that if they're not winning trophies, that if they're not getting A's on their report cards, but they still have a talent that needs to be appreciated and, and cared for and nurtured. That's what you're supposed to do? As a teacher, absolutely. That's my job. That's my job. To help them feel good about themselves? Absolutely. Because 
as a teacher, as an educator, as a person in the public school system, that's my first job. Core curricular standards, you know, the testing, that's all wonderful and great, but my first job is to make kids happy, comfortable in their own skin, um, self-assured. Confident. Absolutely. And this does it. This helps to make them confident. Fred, let's out here, 21 years. Yes. The concept of teacher burnout mean anything mm. to you? Absolutely. I've do you seen relate? It. I do in June. <laughs> in June, I think, oh my goodness, can I make it another, you know, you get the kids wear on you, the other teachers wear on you, the administration wears on you. And what in happens June, in September? I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go now. I was in, in the green room with a couple of students that you just interviewed, and I can't wait to get back there. We're during the summer doing this program in uh, uh, soon to be late summer of 2013. You're ready to go. I am. I'm ready to get back in the classroom, start up, fresh and new. You love this. I do. Were you born to teach? I was. My mother was a teacher. Um, my grandmother wanted to be a teacher and was a Board of Ed member oh. in my town, so I was born to do this. We thank you for uh, not just being born to do it, but more importantly, doing it. Thank you. Thank you, Deanna. Keep thank it up. Thank you very much. Congratulations to your daughter as Thanks. well. Thanks. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, activists in cooperation with the American Medicine Chest Challenge, Choose New Jersey, NJIT, Health Republic Insurance of New Jersey, Berkeley College, and by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. When you work in a public school, you're a part of the community. So when Superstorm Sandy hit, the school employees jumped right in to help. The middle school here served as a refuge for people who were forced from their homes. We all pitched in to help. Custodians, cafeteria workers, teacher aides, mechanics, groundskeepers, all pitching in to help out. School employees are part of a team, whether it's to help educate our children or to recover from a terrible tragedy. That's why I'm so proud to be a member of the NJEA.